In this video, I will provide you with a few ideas on how you can use a truss roof for a room addition. Uh, this was another question sent in by a viewer. Let's take the sheathing off, fascia board, fill area, and trusses. Basically, we're just dealing with, you know, if we break something down into a few areas, I think it's a lot simpler to understand. So let's go ahead and start with the walls and a truss. Let's hook the trusses back up with the fascia board. Look out. The, tr the trusses, roof trusses, for a gable in. And again, you can get uh, hip roofs. You can get all sorts of designs with this, with the engineered roof systems. So wouldn't be a bad idea to check out different designs. Uh, it's really not that complicated. A lot of the instructions are simple. I broke this down to where you have this area here, a flat straight gable roof with nothing on either side kind of a thing. This is one section. You would order these trusses and the fill area you could cut in yourself. So again, there's no fill area here. To get this to blend in, we're just going to add a what I would call a fill area. Hopefully that's what uh, they still call it. Let's put the sheathing back on, take a look at how it's going to connect here. This roof here will go underneath this roof and you need to make sure you leave a space in here so that the roof shingles can go underneath it. The space on that would depend on how thick the roof shingles are going to be. Uh, if you're going to use some like a S tile, something like that, that might be five inches, you might need to cut a big section out of this. Composition shingles that are thin might not need as much. So fascia board coming on the existing house, coming down over this. Take a look at the bottom. You can see, just frame it over. This is the last truss here. And then we have backing for the ceiling. The last truss here, and then we just went 12 inches. That would be a fine. And, and I think really, let's pull this down here. Really, you just want the um, fascia board to go a little bit underneath the uh, point here where this would be maybe an inch something like that that usually looks nice go to the other side this truss right here could actually move over an inch and a half instead of nailing a um, nailing some backing onto it here um, either way would be fine if you don't want to mess up your 16 inches on center for the insulation or the roof sheathing, something like that. Leave the truss and nail a backing board on here. This fascia board, if you notice, is a little lower than the existing fascia board. That's because we have a conventional roof rafter. That's This is 2 by 10 I believe. So I would imagine we have at least um, 8 inches here, let's say where over here we just have a two by four sitting on top of the sitting on top of the wall something maybe this would be about four inches if we went straight up so if you are going to build a room addition and you want the roof to blend in to the existing roof and you have a conventionally framed roof and trusses here all you would need to do is let the truss manufacturer know how high this area right here needs to be and then they could make everything blend in for you. Let's take a look at the corner how this is done. The roof trusses with the lookout. These boards are supporting the roof fascia board. The block here usually needs to be a little lower unless you shape it. I've actually seen people nail these uh, blocks up at the top. That creates a problem for the roof sheathing. So these blocks need to be a little lower here. Back area without any fill. Again, one section. You're going to frame this section here and then add this section here. So we have no fill, fill. So, and this blends everything in here. And I think I'm gonna do a video. I know I've had a couple of requests for how do you actually install the fill area? I'm gonna try and make a video and attach it to the end of this one. Um, it'll be the next video that I make. It really seems to be a something a lot of people are looking for. So here we have two by four blocks that we used for our trusses. 
wouldn't be a bad idea to go with something a little uh, wider here, but this all depends on how how big of a span this is. You know, if, if you have a 16 foot span to where you're only gonna have, um, set, maybe this right here would be a seven foot rafter, a two by four might work, um, or two by six is fine. But if you have a span that's 30 feet, you might need two by eight rafters here and a two by 10 ridge. So uh, just uh, keep that in mind when you're looking at my stuff and saying, hey, you did all that with two by six and maybe it's not gonna work for you. Two by six I got here, the all to scale, and this would be about a two by four and uh, two by six raft, two by six rafters for the fill. I would imagine, like I said, any rafter smaller than four feet can be two by four. Um, you'd probably be safe um, going up to eight feet, but I'm not going to say that. Um, why not use two by six? I, I like to use two by six for anything six foot and above, let's say. So if I have a six foot board here, it's gonna be composition shingles. I might make it a two by four. You know, I mean, if you think about it, the more weight you put in this area here is, is the weight that you are going to be adding to the existing roof. And you need to make sure that your roof will be able to support the weight for the fill area also. And that's right. You've heard it from me many times. You might need to contact a structural engineer for that. This block right here. When I put the when I did the sheathing, I was going to break everything down and make the video a little longer, but I'm not going to do it this time. The when I put the sheathing on down here, let's just put the sheathing on. It just had this little fill area here, so I just went ahead and ran a block across here for this. I know a lot of people will cut the um, side the roof sheathing back. Um, I don't. I usually just do something like this. And cut a little, uh, cut a little, just put a little filler block in there. Um, and that usually works just fine. Zoom in on the ridge, two by six, again a little lower. And then, of course, the shaped rafter. So that's it for this video. Um, don't forget to visit the website if you are looking for more information on how to frame home additions. I'm going to try and uh, provide or do a series, a whole whole bunch of the videos. Any questions you have, feel free to leave them in the comment area or email them to me. If you're looking for some type of a roof design or room addition design, um, I will try and draw something if I can, if I got the time. Sometimes I get a little backed up. So that's it for this video. It is off to the next one.